Ladies and gentlemen, first let me introduce myself. I am Dong Ho Sok, a professor from the Department of Psychiatry, Yonsei University, Seoul, South Korea. It's a great honor to talk about the result of interim analysis on the effect of low-intensity transcranial focused ultrasound stimulation on patients with major depressive disorder at this conference. This study was designed and conducted by the collaborative research team of Yonsei University and Harvard University. Neuromodulation treatment for patients with depressive disorder can be alternative options to conventional pharmacotherapy and psychotherapy. Although electroconvulsive therapy and repetitive transcranial magnetic stimulation were approved for treatment of depression, low-intensity transcranial focused ultrasound stimulation is a promising neuromodulation modulation technique due to its non-invasiveness high special selectivity, and deep penetration depth. The objective of this study is to investigate the effect of the TFUS stimulation on the dose lateral prefrontal cortex compared to the sham stimulation on patients with major depressive disorder. Let me move on to main hypothesis of this study. We expected that stimulation on the left dose lateral prefrontal cortex would enhance the therapeutic effect for patients with depression. There are two reasons why we chose DRPFC. The first reason was because of its important fun function in regulating the negative emotion. The second reason was due to its findings pre in previous studies where it reported hypoactivity in depressed patients. We targeted the left dorsolateral prefrontal cortex because many functional neuroimaging studies reported hypoactivity in the right prefrontal area and hypoactivity in the right prefrontal area. The overall experimental procedure as you can see on this slide, to investigate the treatment effect of low intensity TFUS on patients with depression, a battery of psychiatric evaluations including assessment with several scales were conducted before and after sonication treatment. Resting State fMRI scanning has been conducted before and two weeks after the completion of sonication treatment to examine any changes in the connectivity between the subgenual anterior cingulate cortex and dorsolateral prefrontal cortex related to the treatment effect. The study design is randomized, double-blind, and sham controlled trial. This trial was reviewed by the IRB of Gangnam Severance Hospital and Korean Ministry of Food and Drug Safety. This trial was registered at the public website for clinical trials. Due to the time limit, I will not go over each of the conclusion and exclusion criteria one by one, but I review this slide in case you are interested in it. During our research, we set up the TFUS equipment as shown in Figure A. The figure B is a real picture of the TFUS head ear on a plastic mannequin head. Figure C is the mapping of the acoustic field along the transverse and perpendicular to the sonication path. We recruited 35 and excluded 14 participants due to reason as shown in this diagram. 11 patients were assigned to the active group and 10 patients to the sham control group according to the randomization table until now. 19 patients finished the entire process and one patient's data were excluded due to the significant emotional changes associated with the, his recent layoff. Data from 18 paid participants were included in the interim analysis for clinical assessment outcomes. Let's move on to the next point, which is about the results of primary outcome analysis. Mean changes in the objective depressive symptom rating score from baseline to final assessment was observed as the below listed figure. In the repeated measures ANOVA, main effect of time was significant and interaction effect over time between the two groups was also significant. However, there was no significant effect between groups. In other words, active TFUS group showed more rapid and significant improvement of depressive symptoms compared to the sham control group. Results for analysis of secondary outcomes showed similar patterns. Regarding safety issues during this study, there were no observable adverse events in follow-up brain MRI scans two weeks after completion of the entire ultrasound stimulation session. 
to sum up, this trial, which is the first study of its kind, demonstrates safety and probable efficacy in the treatment of depression with low-intensity transcranial ultrasound stimulation. This study is partially supported by Neurosonar Corporation Limited, Republic of Korea, and we had no conflict of interest regarding this study. Finally, we want to thank all of our research team members supporting this study. Thank you for your interest and time.